Hi, Roland is the name networking the game. Once again, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. We're learning the A to Z of network devices, configuration, verification, and troubleshooting is guaranteed, as well as tips and tricks on how to authoritatively take full charge of your network devices. In my previous video, Recall that in order to allow full communication among every staff in my organization, PSL.com, we used a very efficient and effective RAL in protocol called EIGRP. However, note that EIGRP could only function if the devices are manufactured by Cisco. In today's tutorials, Let's assume that we are adding new routers that are not Cisco routers and still want to enable a scalable, efficient and effective routing protocol. Say we just opened, my, my, my office just opened a branch office or my organization just opened a branch office in New York as well as another office in Lagos. And so to the branch office, uh, a new staff, Phil, is posted there, and to the Lagos office, Adi is posted there. Okay, and these routers are not Cisco proprietary, and we still need a scalable, efficient, and effective routing protocol. Guess what? OSPF is the answer. Open shutters part first. OSPF topology specifies area definition, single and multi-area. Like what we're seeing here, we have three areas here, area 1, area 0, and area 2. So effectively, we'll be enabling multiple area, multi-area OSPF configuration here. At the end of today's session, you learn how to implement both single and multi-area OSPF on routers, how to verify the routing table with OSPF running on it, the features, benefits and demerits of OSPF such as it being a link state routing protocol, fast convergence, support for VLSM and CIDR, support for multicast updates thus conserves network and router resources it's highly scalable and it supports a very large number of routers unlike rip that supports a maximum of 15 routers use of cost as metric which is actually a function of bandwidth it supports triggered updates it's not susceptible to routing loops. It also supports grouping of routers into areas. Just like what we are seeing here, the routers are grouped into areas. Area 1, these three routers, Rome, London and Madrid, have put them in an Area 1 scenario. Then we have Area 0 and then we have Area 2 Okay, for the new router in Lagos. However, this area definition allows OSPF to circumvent its excessive demand on network and router resources. OSPF consumes a huge amount of router and network resources, like bandwidth, because of initial flooding of LSE, link state advertisements, and of course when there's a topology change. I'll explain this later. Also, CPU and memory, because it stores three tables, adjacency database, link state database, and routing table. This has a huge demand on router and network resources. Without further ado, let's begin. Now, on the previous topology, we used these three routers, this is what I used in the previous topology, the EIGRP configuration in my last class. 
so to these routers now instead of configuring EIGRP will enable OSPF this should be a single area topology and we'll see how that pans out before we now extend it to multi-area OSPF adding these two routers that's why you can see that I've not connected these routers to the entire network yet and so I'll log into these routers and show you how to configure OSPF. Okay. So to the Roam router, you as usual, you go to the global configuration mode. You enter router OSPF. Okay. Then OSPF, you must enter what we call a process ID. It's any value from 1 to 65,535. Similar, something similar to the AS number we saw in EIGRP, except that this is not given by the service provider. And um, all routers don't necessarily need to be in the same, uh, have the same process ID, so to say. The process ID only identifies different processes running on a router. As a matter of fact, you can even have multiple processes running on the same router. But take note, it's CPU intensive. Okay? So let's say we are using one, and for the purpose of this class, on all the routers will be using the process ID 1, the same process ID. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Okay? Then as usual, you enter your network statements. In this case, I have network. Directly connected networks is, is what you advertise, similar to RIP and EIGRP. Okay, I have 192.168.10.0. Okay, now in configuring OSPF, after you enter the network statement, you must enter what we call a wildcard mask. Okay. I'll explain wildcard mask in a different class. But just take note that the wildcard mask, what it does it is that it specifies the interfaces or devices that will participate in a particular process. In this case, OSPF process. It can also be used in some other scenarios like access lists. Okay? So just to give you a Q, the white card mask is, let me say, opposite of subnet mask. Okay, so I have slash 30 here. So the subnet mask for slash 30 is 255.255.255.252. Now the wild card mask, you just subtract the entire subnet mask from 255 all through. Okay, and so when you do that, you arrive at 255 minus 255 0 okay that is the first zero I have here 25 the second 255 in the second octet minus 255 0 the third 255 0 then 255 minus 252 is gonna give me what 3 so the wildcard mask for 255 255 255 255 or rather slash 30 is what? 0.0.0.3. Okay? Take notes. You do that for all scenarios. Okay? Then area is a command. Then this is where you specify the area to which this interface will belong to. The interface that has this subnet. So in this case, if you look at the topology, it's area 0. Good. You hit your enter key. You do the same for the next one, the next directly connected network, which is what? 172.16.1.0. And what's the wildcard mask? The wildcard mask for this is actually 0, .0, 0.0.0. Remember that we're using slash 28 here. And slash 28 is 255, 255.240. .250. So if you do the wildcard mask, you have 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0.15. Okay, all I did was to subtract 
the entire Sovnian mask from 255. And to this last part, I'll be having 15. Still area 0. That interface still belongs to area 0. And I'm done with that router. All you need to do in OSPF is to understand the use of wildcard mask. That is the major thing. Okay? Then I'll go back. I'll save and go out of this router. Okay? So, the next router. Enable. I'll go to the global configuration mode. Router OSPF1. Network. Here I'm having 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.0.15. Oh, incomplete. Okay, area. Zero network one nine two one six eight or ten dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot zero okay too many zero and take notes it's actually dot three because on this interface we are using two five two so dot three okay same same thing for the next interface but in this case the network address is gonna be ten dot zero good i'll save good now to the third router the madrid router router OSPF one network we have one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty dot zero one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot zero dot three area zero Okay, we also have one one seven two dot one six eight one six dot three dot zero dot three dot zero same no wildcard max 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0.15 area 0 good now I'll save okay now this is what we've just configured is single area OSPF okay and this is what I'll do so we've configured OSPF from here to here I'll give IP addresses to these devices and I should be able to ping from Julio connected to Rome router to Hernandez connected to Madrid router let's see how that works out okay so this is what I'll do have I given it an address yeah it's having an address already from the previous configuration I suppose okay so let's go and ping okay command prompt Ping one seven two. I think um Hernandez is on one seven two dot one six dot three dot two. Okay, you can see. So we've successfully configured single area OSPF. Okay. Um now we have to go and implement the multi-area OSPF. However, before we go further, 
pause for a few sec, hit the subscribe button so you get notified on my subsequent videos. Okay, then um, let me see if I can see the routing table, show IP route on this router, show IP route, oh, should be doing that from the router. Okay, so now show IP route. Okay, still having some. Well, let's finish the, t the entire configuration first and we'll see what's going on there. Okay, now. In order to enable the multi-area OSPF, like I said, we've connected these routers there. All I need to do now is to connect my cables. We've put the routers on the topology. So I'll come to the Madrid router. Oh, let me use this. I'll come to the Madrid, to the New York router. Oh, there's no serial interface there yet. So, as usual, we need to go into these routers and enable our serial and add our serial interface. I told you how to do this last time. Okay. We switch off. I put two interfaces. I switch on. Okay. I'll come here as well. Select my serial model switch off the router connect to serial modules and power it back on okay also I'll use a console cable from this router from this PC to this router console uh, likewise another console cable from this PC to this router console okay then uh, between these two devices my crossover cable from the fast ethernet to this from the fast ethernet okay now i connect my serial cable let's use serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 here then i need to add a serial model here Okay. Uh, okay. Let's do this. I have to go and switch off this router and add a serial module. So, I believe I've saved, so I switch it off. And I'll come down here and select another serial module here. Okay, connected to this. And power it back on okay so in this case I can now successfully connect this to this good likewise I'll connect this to this now I'll log into this device and carry out my connection so terminal answer no to this enable configure terminal let me give you the host name this is New York okay New York okay so router OSPF good OSPF 1 network now I'm trying to advertise the network connected to the Madrid router and I want to put that network in area 0 now the multi -area, multiple area thing comes into play 
where you specify the specific or the particular network you want to put to a particular area what do i mean for example on this router an interface will be in a will be connected to area zero while the second interface will be connected to area two the interface connected to the madrid router will be in area zero and that connected to the lagos router will be in area two you can see so i put network 192 oh before then let me go and give ip addresses oh so interface serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 ip address let's give it 192.168.30.3 okay or let's say 30.2 255.255.255.252 no shutdown or oh, clock rate sixty four thousand no shutdown exit okay we'll go to interface Serial zero slash three slash zero the other interface IP address one nine two dot one six eight let's give it one nine two dot one six eight dot forty dot one two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two no shutdown clock rate 64,000 exit okay there's another interface connected to the newly deployed star field which is on fast Ethernet interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and we'll give that an IP address of what IP address 192.16 okay 172.16.4.2 172.16.4.1 rather 255.255.255.240 no shutdown exit okay router ospf one network so we have one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty dot zero okay a wildcard mask of zero dot zero dot zero dot three connected to area zero this is what I was saying this connects to area zero okay you hit your enter key then we have the other network connected to area 2 the network of 192.168.40.0 it's actually connected to area 2 hit your enter key okay then um, we also have this connected to area let's say area zero as well talking about the 172.168 172.16.4.0 connected to area let's leave it at area zero okay so we're done with that router we'll save well let me see i need to confirm whether i actually put these routers on area one okay i'm thinking i made a mistake and put them on area zero okay so let's see good so we have the eigrp is still running there okay see i put it on area zero okay 
So this is what we'll do. I'll have to change this. No router here, GRP 100. Okay. So I'll remove the EIGRP router, no router, EIGRP 100. Okay. So router or SPF, I need to remove this and put it on area. Let me just say no router or SPF 1. Okay. Let me confirm. Okay, so I've removed everything on SPF and EIGRP. So, configure terminal. This is what we'll do. Router, OSPF, 1. Now, what I've just done is I needed to put this OSPF router in area 1. But I mistakenly put everything here in area 0. So, that's what I'm trying to rectify now. Okay, so network. We had 192.168.10.0 wildcard mass 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 area 1. Okay, the next one network 172.1.6.1.0 It's telling me about, it's giving me a notification about the mismatch, okay? So, network 172.16 dot one dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot one five area one okay I save show run to confirm yeah so I've done it all right so I'll quickly go to the next router and do the same thing okay First and foremost, I'll show running config to verify what I have running. Show running config. Okay. Show run. Oh. Show run. Okay. So when I show running config, I can now see that I still have EIGRP running and also SPF. So I'll remove both of them. Config. Terminal, router, EIGRP, 100, like I said, I'll put no to that. Also, no router, OSPF, 1, okay, so, router, OSPF, 1, okay, network, 192.168.10.0.0.0.0.3 area 1 okay network 192.168.20.0 so the next one is dot 20.0 Okay. Network one nine two dot one six eight dot twenty dot zero. Okay, the same wildcard mask area one. We also have network one seven two dot one. This is wildcard of one zero uh, one five one seven two. dot one six dot two dot zero okay that's the first ethernet interface connected to the jones pc okay so likewise i'll save let me confirm show running config you can see that it has taken effect there okay so i'll quickly go to the next router I'm kind of in a haste now because my boss is telling me that we don't have time left okay 
those new guys need to start communicating with the head office okay so I'll go to the Madrid router before then let me view what I have there do show run and I can see that EIGRP is running alongside OSPF so no router EIGRP 100 no router OSPF 1 okay router OSPF 1 okay network 192.168.192.168.20.0.0.0.0.3 area 0 area 1 okay then network 172 172.16.3.0 that's the interface connected to the Hernandez PC okay area 1 as well okay then remember that we gave we added a new interface to this router a serial module and we'll go and give it an IP address interface serial 0 slash let's confirm so that's okay see it here serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 okay so interface serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 IP address 192.168.40 I suppose 255.255.255.252 no shutdown exit so we'll now go and advertise that interface in OSPF process OSPF what now that interface is connected to area 0 remember so router OSPF 1 network 192.168.20.0 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .
two. No shutdown. Exit. So I need to advertise that interface in area zero. IP address, router or SPF, one, network. So what we have here is area zero for 192.168.30.0. Good. So let's verify. Show running config. Let's see what we have there, especially here. You can see the IP address on interface area 0 slash 2 slash 0, the newly added interface 30.1. And uh, we can also see 30.0 is under area 0. Very important because if you mismatch these, OSPF routers won't be able to ex establish an adjacency with one another. Okay, so this. Again, area 120.0. Good. Then this area 1. I think we are done. Okay. So, that being said, have I configured this? No, not yet. So, I'll log into this router and enable this. So, let's go into this router. Okay. Show running config. Yes, we've configured this. We have two area zeros and area one. Okay. Okay. Area zeros and area two. Okay. So 40.0 is on area two. Okay. So we'll go to this last router and give it an IP address. Okay, so coming to this router, configure terminal, interface serial 0 slash, let's confirm that this interface is serial 0 slash, zero slash 3 slash 0, okay, 0 slash 3 slash 0. Okay, IP address 192.168.40.2, I suppose. Let's confirm that this is 40.1. Okay, so this has to be 40.2. Okay, and 30.2 here, so this has to be 30.1 good so this has to be 40.2 okay so we are correct okay so we have ip address 192.168.40.2255.255.255.252 okay no shutdown exit interface fast ethernet interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 IP address 172.168.40.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
which is having a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 area 0 no area 2 okay then the 172 Okay, 172.16.5.0 network, 0 .0 0.0.0.15, okay, area 2. So we are done. We'll save, right? Good. So the next thing we need to do is to give IP addresses to this device, okay? So this device, for example, go and give it an IP address, 172.16.4.2, a subnet mask, 255.24t the default gateway 172.16.4.1 okay we go to the next pc okay We give it an IP address of 172.16.5.2.255.255.255.240.172.16.5.1 Okay, good. So ideally we should be able to ping from here to here okay so let's try and ping from here let's go to the PC ping 172.16.5.2 good so it's going end to end so you can see this is lovely we've enabled OSPF on the newly added routers that are not Cisco proprietary okay we enabled OSPF single area we saw how it worked out and we are now seeing how it works out across a multiple area okay now we can ping you can see that Julio just pinged at the over the OSPF domain wonderful so let's see what the routing table looks like, for example, on this router. Now, I must say this. In OSPF, routers, there are different names used to call routers. We have the autonomous system boundary router. We have the area boundary router, area border router. Area border router is a router that has multiple more than one interfaces in different areas. For example, this is an ABR. It has an interface in area 1, an interface in area 0. This is also an ABR. Interface in area 0, interface in area 2. I don't want to go into the specifics now. It takes a lot of terminology. Okay? So let's see. Show IP route. Now on this router, you can see how the OSPF routing table looks like. I'm on the Madrid router. Now I told you about these codes. You can see the code for OSPF. O. Okay? So this OSPF code is telling you that all these networks 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 according to the topology are all OSPF networks 1.0, 2.0 they are learned via OSPF. What that means is that this is learned via OSPF on this router. These two, these two and this. These and these will learn via directly connected to this router. Okay? Now I want you to understand that 
there's what we call OIA, inter-area routes. What that means is that networks land from a different area into another area that crosses and into another area is land via or is symbolized as OIA. For example, this network, we should see it on this router as an OIA route, that is 30.0 network. Okay, I've not put this here. Okay. Um, okay, so this is this is 192.168.30.0 slash 30 okay where is it oh okay so this is also 192.168.30.0 Okay, let me take this up. Okay, so let me add this now. Okay, so this will be 192.168.40.0 slash 30. Okay. Good. So on this router, it's going to learn this as an OIA route. But this will be in the same. Any route, any, any network that comes from a different area will be viewed as an inter-area route. Take note. Very important. In, in a more advanced topology that I'll configure in a different class, I'll tell you about the different types of areas, the different types of OSPF routers, and a lot more. OSPF entails a lot. Okay? It's not a day's class, and that will be an advanced class, possibly a class that is meant for CCNP, the professional level of the course we are studying here. Okay, so this OIA, as you can see, 5.0 came as OIA, 40.0 came as OIA because they are coming from a different area. You can see the code OIA. See, O is for OSPF, and then IA, where is it? Inter area route IA. Okay, now as usual, the first thing you see there is the network address. The next thing you see there, the next figure you're seeing there, it's the administrative distance value. In RIP, we saw it as 120. In EIGRP, we saw it as 90. In OSPF, you can see it as 110. And then the 129, this is the metric used by OSPF. OSPF attaches a cost value to each link depending on bandwidth. The higher the bandwidth, the lower the cost. So these are fixed values. For example, on some serial interfaces, the cost is 64. Then one for fast Ethernet interface. So for example, this shows that a cumulative of the cost is 64. To go to that network, you it's going to add the cost of the serial interface to the cost of the fast Ethernet to that network 64 plus 1 65 here I suppose 64 64 plus 1 which means there are two serial interfaces and a fast Ethernet interface to that network that's making it 129 likewise here okay now via as usual the next stop address then the interface that is connecting to that network Wow you've learned a lot today Okay, so basically, this is how we configure OSPF for both single and multiple area. Okay, now that we've verified our, our, verif our configuration, now I've explained some OF OSPF features as well. For example, the cost. Okay, OSPF uses multicast all day updates. Now, OSPF conserves network resources because of this area definition, like I said. Now, each router here only needs to keep information in the link state database that is related to this area. Likewise, this. I don't want to go into discussion about the link state database now, but note that OSPF is resource intensive because it uses three tables. This, each router keeps the routing table. 
It keeps an adjacency database that stores information about its neighbors, directly connected neighbors, as well as a link state database that stores information about each link or each um, router's link in a particular area. Okay, so all these add to the CPU intensiveness of the router. Okay, so that's why we say it's resource intensive. Okay, likewise memory because all these tables need to be stored in the memory. Okay. Then the bandwidth implication comes as a result of LSA is being flooded. OSPF routers send something called LSA, just like updates, link state advertisements. Okay. Now, although these LSAs are flooded just once and will not be flooded again until there's a change in network topology, but that initial flooding takes a lot of bandwidth. Now, OSPF does all this to keep a very precise information. However, this comes at an expense or at a cost of network and bandwidth resource, uh, resources. Yeah. And that's why, in order to help to circumvent this, it does its own part by segregating the network. The network administrator has to segregate the network into what areas to minimize the impact. Good. So, very scalable, OSPF routers can contain even more than 200 routers on a topology. It also supports VLSM as you can see. Different subnet masks are being used for different networks. Very fast in conversion, if not faster than EIGRP. Well, almost the same thing, okay? So, there's that. I, we, as a recap, We've enabled OSPF on our routers, both single area and multiple area. We've verified the routing table on a router. We've pinged from one end from Julio's PC to Adai's PC in Lagos. Okay. We've also verified, explained some OSPF features and terminologies. Now I'll dedicate a specific video to extensive verification and troubleshooting of advanced OSPF network topology. Please stay tuned. You will enjoy that video. Hope you've had a wonderful time and added a little knowledge to your reservoir of knowledge base. If so, kindly subscribe and feel free to drop comments below. In addition, for further comprehensive training and consultation, chat me up via the email provided. See you in the next class. Thanks and arrivederci.